In this video, I'm going to talk to you about scenario analysis and capital budgeting. Uh, specifically, I'm going to tell you what scenario analysis is all about, why it is useful in capital budgeting, and then using an example, I'll show you how you can conduct scenario analysis using Excel. The idea behind scenario analysis is rather simple. Whenever we're doing capital budgeting, we're interested in figuring out whether a long-term investment has, say, like a positive or a negative NPV. And so our NPV in turn depends on what are the underlying financial cash flows and whatever is the discount rate. Uh, so let's denote this discount rate by the symbol K. And uh, we know through our capital budgeting exercises that financial cash flows in turn depend on what our sales estimates are, what our cost estimates are, capital expenditures, changes in networking capital, so on and so forth. In scenario analysis, we consider specific scenarios and try to understand that in those scenarios, what would be the NPV? Specifically, if we have some baseline numbers on the basis of which we've calculated NPV, scenario analysis would say, hey, what about a scenario in which, let's suppose machineries become expensive so that our capital expenditures are gonna be higher, and at the same time, the market is doing not so well, and therefore we're not going to be selling as much. Oh, and maybe we're also expecting that minimum wage is going to go up in that scenario, and therefore our costs are going to be higher as well. So how about a scenario like that in which multiple inputs, multiple inputs, maybe your sales expectations, your cost expectations, your capital expenditure expectations, they're all changing. You know, what would be our NPV in that sort of a scenario? Scenario analysis is very close to what is called a sensitivity analysis, and this is something that I have uh, talked about in a previous video. I encourage you to take a look at that as well. Sensitivity analysis also tries to understand you know, how sensitive is our NPV calculation uh, to the underlying inputs. The difference is that in sensitivity analysis, we only change one input at a time. In that sense, scenario analysis is a broader concept. It allows us to consider specific scenarios in which multiple inputs can be changing at the same time. And so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through an example in which you'll see how you can conduct scenario analysis in Excel. So let's suppose there's a company called Solar Air, and this is a company that tested developing a new product, which is solar powered jet engines. And let's suppose the product is a success and now they're trying to go into full-scale production of these solar-powered jet engines. They believe that if they spend about $1.5 million today, this is your capital expenditures, they'd be able to sell about 3,000 solar-powered jets over the next five years. Uh, the way they have come up with this estimate is that they believe that the size of the jet industry is going to be about 10,000 jets per year, and they'd be able to capture market share of 30%, so that 3,000 is just 30% of this 10,000. They also believe that the price at which they can sell these jets is going to be about $2 million per jet. The variable cost is going to be $1 million per jet. There's going to be fixed costs associated with this production process of about 1.94. So all of the inputs are given over here that can help us estimate the financial cash flows or free cash flows that solar air can expect to generate from this project now given these financial cash flows it is relatively easy to calculate net present value so net present value is the output that is a function of these financial cash flows and the underlying discount rate so notice that i have put in for rate i've put in the discount rate I've put in the values for financial cash flows and I'm calculating, calculating NPV and I'm calculating IRR. One thing that I want to point out, and this is something that you will fully appreciate towards the later half of this video, is that if you look at the NPV calculation for discount rate, the cell reference is to the cell B13. You can see that B13. However, it doesn't say B13 here. It says discount rate. That's because... Uh, I have changed the name of the cell from B13 to discount rate. And the way you do that is as follows. You go here, and right here at the top left, you see what the name of the cell is. By default, it should show you uh, B13. And this is generally what happens. If you go to some generic cell, like for example over here, this is cell G16, uh, and you can see this is the generic name for the cell. But you can always go and change the name of the cell to anything that you want. 
And so because I'm measuring the value of the discount rate here, I actually went here and changed the name of the cell to discount rate. Again, you will fully appreciate the usefulness of this uh, towards the later half of this video. And this is something that I've done for most of the inputs, for discount rate, for networking capital, for market size, uh, market share. You can see the names of the cells have been changed. Now, while you have this baseline estimate of the net present value of the project, you're concerned that there could be a possibility uh, that maybe there is some sort of like an economic downturn which causes the industry size to be lower than what you expect. And at the same time, maybe for some reason you expect to capture less market share. So let's suppose you think that there might be a pessimistic scenario in which the size of the market is only going to be, let's suppose, 7,000. And at the same time, uh, you're only able to capture, uh, let's suppose, 10% of that market. Now, the way these calculations have been done is that they're self-referencing back to these inputs. So we know that annual sales in that case would only be 700. And if you take a look at like the revenue calculation, that's now multiplying two with 700. And so our financial cash flow numbers change, our NPV changes, that's not a problem. My point is that you could technically change the different inputs here and see for specific scenarios what the NPV is going to be. But uh, we want to do this in an elegant fashion so that we can sort of ideally populate a table where we can show for different scenarios, what our NPV is going to look like. So in order to do that, this is what we can do. First, I'm gonna go back to the baseline numbers that we have. Once we have this, in Excel, what you wanna do is you go under data, okay, at the top you have data, go under what if analysis, and under that, go and click on scenario manager. Hey, we're talking about scenario analysis. Guess what, scenario manager is there to help you do that exactly. Now, when I click on scenario manager, it says, well, no scenarios exist. Of course, we haven't created any. So let's change that. We'll go ahead and click on add. Now, it'll first ask you, what name would you like to give this scenario? Here is my recommendation to you. Always create the first scenario as your default scenario. In other words, label it default, or you can also call it expected. In other words, Create the first scenario which corresponds to your default or expected values. After all, when you say that your inputs are going to take on these values, you're creating a scenario. This is a very specific scenario. It's the most likely scenario or the scenario that you expect to prevail. It is, after all, a scenario. So you'll call it expected or maybe we'll call it default. And then it asks you, okay, which cells would you like to change? Your different scenarios correspond to the different values of your underlying inputs. So the cells that will be changing will be these cells, which basically correspond to the different values of the inputs that you have. So I'm going to highlight market size and market share. I'm not going to mess around with annual sales because this is a computation. This is already a product of these two. So when these will change, this will automatically change. So I'm going to highlight these two. I'm going to highlight price, fixed cost, all this. I'm not changing depreciation for the same reason. Depreciation is being calculated as capex divided by the useful life. The assumption is that depreciation is being done on a straight line basis with, a, with the capex having a useful life of five years. And then I'm going to highlight networking capital and discount rate. So these are the different inputs or the cells that can change, which can therefore result in different scenarios. What you notice is that all that information gets reflected here. So you say, okay, I'm done. And now when you press okay, scenario manager says, okay, what values for these cells would you like in your default scenario? Now, the first thing that I want you to appreciate is this. It says market size and market share and price here. This is exactly why I changed the names of these cells. If I had not done this, if I had not done this, what you would have seen for market size here instead would have been B2 because B2 is where this 10,000 value is existing. And for market share, you would have seen B3. Uh, but that's not what's happening. When you see B2, B3, B4, it's 
difficult to remember, you know, which cell corresponds to which input that you're trying to record. And you're always sort of going back and forth trying to understand, okay, what is it in B2? What is, is it that I have in B3? But when you give these cells the names of the variables whose values you're capturing over here, it makes it easier for you to keep track of the inputs and therefore the scenario manager. So now for market size in your default scenario, you already have 10,000. So that's the second thing that I want you to appreciate. Your default values are already captured in the scenario manager. So you don't need to change any of these inputs because these inputs already correspond to your default scenario. So all you have to do is click OK. And now your default scenario has been created. But then the whole point was to evaluate different other scenarios. So you say, hey, you know what? I'd like to add a scenario. I'm going to call this a pessimistic, pessimistic scenario. I'm going to be changing the same cells, the same cells. So it's the same cells. But if I'm being pessimistic, that under this pessimistic situation, my market size, I'm being pessimistic. For some reason, I think that I'll only see a market in which there is demand for only 8,000 jets. And you know, if I'm being pessimistic, my market share will not be 30%. Maybe it will be 25%. And hey, if I'm being pessimistic, maybe I won't be able to sell each jet for uh, $2 million, but maybe only for 1.8. You probably get the idea. Depending on what you're expecting to happen in your pessimistic scenario, you can change all these different inputs to uh, different values. Once you do that, you can click OK, and now you've created a pessimistic scenario. Let's add one more scenario. Maybe we'll refer to that as optimistic. Again, same cells, only now in the optimistic situation, maybe the market size will be 15,000. Maybe you'll be able to capture 40% of that market. Uh, the price might be 2.2. And uh, if you're lucky, maybe your fixed costs might only be 1,800. And so click OK. And now you've created these different scenarios. You have a default scenario, the pessimistic scenario, the optimistic scenario. So now if you go click on pessimistic and then hit the button show, Here's what's going to happen. Excel will automatically change all the inputs to correspond to the numbers that you have in the pessimistic scenario. So for example, in the pessimistic scenario, you said market size might be 8,000, market share might only be 25%, annual sales automatically get adjusted. As a result, all your revenues and therefore the cash flows and hence the NPV gets adjusted to reflect the pessimistic scenario automatically you can also run the optimistic scenario. It says show, and it will run the optimistic scenario. In the optimistic scenario, all the numbers change here as well. As you can see, when you run these different scenarios, the underlying inputs, basically the values change to reflect that scenario. I've only created two scenarios here. You can have multiple scenarios, right? Uh, but here's the point. Because when you run these different scenarios, the underlying inputs change. If you run four or five different scenarios and then you're like, hey, wait a minute, what was my default scenario? Where did I start with? Ah, that is exactly why we created the first scenarios, the default scenario. The whole point of this one is so that you can always click on this and go back to where you started from. Now, it would be nice to also see in a tabular form you know, what our NPV or for that matter, what our IRR may look like in all these different scenarios. So fortunately, that is another thing that you can do in Excel. What you'll see here is a button which says summary. When you click on that, Scenario Manager asks you, what are the outputs that you would like to see for these different scenarios? At the end of the day, what we're interested in is knowing under these different scenarios, what would be our NPV, what would be our IRR. So the result that we are interested in, the result that we are interested in is actually our NPV and IRR. So these are our result cells. So we highlight those and then we say, give us a scenario summary. So you click on OK. And uh, once you do that, Excel actually creates a separate tab in which you can see the different cells that are changing what their current values are, but then it also tells you that you have a default scenario, the pessimistic scenario, the optimistic scenario, and then it shows you that your results under those situations are for NPV, under the default scenario, your NPV will be 1.5 million. Under the pessimistic, it will be negative 2.18 million. Under the optimistic, it will be 13.011. Notice that 
in result, it says NPV here, but here it says cell B17. The reason why that is happening is because right here, I have actually labeled this cell as NPV, but the label of this cell, I did not change, right? And that is precisely why, you know, this, well, this doesn't look that user-friendly anymore, right? Ideally, we'd like to see this as IRR. So if I had actually labeled the cell IRR, and then if I had run the summary, I would have seen IRR over here. And that is precisely why we change the names of these cells so that when we generate a table like this, like a scenario summary, we can see uh, more clearly the different scenarios. And so this is how you can conduct a scenario analysis in Excel for capital budgeting purposes. Scenario analysis is definitely superior to sensitivity analysis in the sense that it allows you to change multiple inputs at one time so that you can see what your NPV or IRR may be in different scenarios. However, it suffers from the same problem that uh, sensitivity analysis does, which is that sometimes it can give you a false sense of security. What I mean by that is that if I go under my scenario manager and click on pessimistic scenario, this pessimistic scenario is something that I have come up with. I feel that in the pessimistic scenario, market size will be 8,000, market share will be 25%. But what if the pessimistic scenario might be worse than what I'm guessing? Then this number may not be representative of the true pessimistic uh, scenario. And so especially in situations where for different scenarios, if you keep on get, getting positive NPV, positive NPV, positive NPV, uh, you might say, hey, you know what? I did all my scenario analysis, ran these different scenarios. In each scenario, my uh, NPV was coming out to be positive. Uh, so this is a great project. But guess what? You came up with all those scenarios. And uh, if, if your scenarios are not, for some reason, uh, representative of what might actually happen, then it can give you a false sense of security uh, that the project is good. So keep that in mind when you're doing scenario analysis or for that matter, looking at a scenario analysis that has been done by someone else.